Okay, here we're going to look at naming and identifying some muscles, and I, th and I thought this was a very appropriate uh, image to put as the title slide. So going on in naming of skeletal muscles, well, there's some important factors um, that go into the naming process. It's, it's not just a random name. The location of the muscle, the bone or body region associated with that muscle can affect the name. The shape of the muscle can be part of the reason where it gets its name. For example, the deltoid muscle. Deltoid means triangle, so it's a triangular shaped muscle. The relative size, whether it's maximus being large, minimus being small, or longus being long. Direction of the fibers, rectus or fibers that run straight, um, transverse and oblique fibers that run at angles. The number of origins, biceps have two origins, triceps have three origins. Location of attachments, it's named according to the point of origin or insertion. And also the action, the flexor or extender as the names of the muscles that flex or extend, respectively. In addition to how these muscles get their name, well, a lot of it's derived from the Latin. So we could look at our Latin roots and be able to derive the meaning, uh, the muscle that moves things away. So this is what I want to highlight, and abductor moves muscles away. So if you remember from one of the other um, lectures that I did, where we talked about angles and movement, abductor moves things away. In contrast to that, adductor is a muscle that moves towards, typically towards the midline. And these are just some examples here that you're welcome to look at um, in comparing these two that may sound initially very similar, how they differ, and how their Latin root can help describe the motion that they take on. The overview of muscles, I tried to highlight some in green that um, I'm going to have you responsible for. doesn't mean the others are any less important. Just trying to provide with a little direction as far as what to expect potentially on one of my quizzes. Uh, we have our deltoid here. Remember, that's a triangle-shaped um, triceps. Remember, three points of origin, gluteus maximus, big muscles. Um, you know, just able to go through and identify some of these key muscles here. Um, adductors, how do those move? Um, and you can see all the other ones that for right now um, I'm leaving out as far as knowing for identification quiz. Sphincter is one I do want you to be able to recognize. It's a little hard to show because it's an internal muscle. It's actually a ring of muscles surrounding and serving to guard or close an opening of a tube, such as the openings of the stomach. So this is our lower esophageal sphincter, and this is what's sealing up. This is its closed version. This is its opened version here. It's open as we want food to pass into the stomach, but it's closed, we don't want the stomach acid to get into our esophagus. If you've suffered from heartburn, you may have an improperly closing um, esophageal sphincter. And that could lead acid to getting into the esophagus, creating that burning sensation. Muscles that create facial expression. This occipital frontalis is the one right in the front here. You can see how it kind of relates to some of the names of the bones. So again, you can see there's many more that create facial expression. I'm just hiding that one here. Keep in mind that terms anterior and lateral don't go away, and that helps us be able to determine the view of the angle that we're getting in these images. Muscles of the eye. Now, I didn't highlight any of these in particular, but I want you to be able to realize, again, lateral versus medial. What's that? Superior going up, inferior going down, medial going towards the middle region. This is the right eye in the anterior view versus the right the right eye here with the lateral view. So remember, anterior, or lateral, superior, medial, inferior, all terms that you still need to be reviewing and familiar with. Posterior and lateral views of the neck, there's our trapezius, the same muscle. I just want you to be able to recognize it in two different orientations. Some of our external obliques, we're looking now at the muscles of the abdomen region. Uh, try to focus on a few. This one does kind of zoom in a little bit, but please realize the external obliques are here. And they're also here. This is a zoomed in version. And our pectoralis major, major being our large muscles. Muscles that position the pectoral girdle. So we're looking again at our scapula here. Um, we have our sternum. We have our um, part of our scapula here and some of the muscles that attach to that. I did go over already deltoids and trapezius, but again, those come back. And here you're able to appreciate the orientation that they are in the body. Now, if it says cut, this is the delta that's been cut in this region to expose some of the other attachment points and bones. 
please realize that that delta does cover this entire region. Upper arm muscles are biceps and our triceps, biceps having two points of origin, triceps having three. Be able to recognize where each of these are located. Keep in mind our anterior view is here on the left and our posterior here on the right. Uh, lastly, our hip and thigh muscles. Again, not going to make you learn a lot of these, but um, the quadrus, the gluteus maxis, and the adductor group all should be familiar as far as what they do in the relative size comparison. Hopefully that's helpful to give you a brief overview of some of the muscles you should be able to identify and appreciation for all the muscles that we do have in our bodies and all the corresponding names.